Hey guys, Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another video here on YouTube. Today we are talking about editing faster inside of DaVinci Resolve. It seems that many of you are interested in using Resolve as your editor, which is crazy because a couple years ago wasn't about the editing, but now um, things are uh, things are looking uh, they're looking pretty good, pretty good for the old black magic design and the editing goodness. So I figure I would share a couple tips that I've learned to help edit faster. And these type of things are common to any editor, but we'll specifically look at some stuff for Resolve 14 today. Real quick, if you're looking for some more editing tips, this is a course that's not in Resolve, it's actually in Premiere, but pretty much everything when it comes to editing can be translated to your app of choice. This is a new video training we have out called How to Edit DJI Spark Footage. It goes through end to end how to edit a highlight reel from a bunch of drone footage. So if you're looking for some cool editing tips to maybe up your chops on that, check it out. That's at groundcontrolcolor.com slash training. So first tip I would give for speedy editing would be to edit in passes. Here's what I mean. Let's say I'm gonna make a very simple edit with this clip and this clip and this clip. I'm just dragging them down into my timeline. What I'm gonna do is work from the beginning to the end several times. And each time I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed. The first pass, I'm pretty much just laying out the clips that I want in my timeline and roughly chopping them up. So now I have a basic edit of a few different clips. The reason why this is awesome is because at this point, I can pretty much show this to somebody and they can get an idea of what I'm going for. If I do a perfect edit from the very beginning to the very end, the most I'll be able to do is show them the beginning. So if I need to finish this project up early, I'll at least have a watchable edit of the entire story. So from here, I can go back through and refine my edits and it'll just get better and better and I'll always have a watchable version. So that's the first tip is edit in passes. Next tip is whenever you move on to your next task in your editing, take a second to organize your workspace. One thing I like to do is close out all of my extra panels that I don't need so I can focus more on what I'm doing. Things like zooming your timeline, closing extra panels, and just cleaning up your workspace so you can focus. Those little things will save you time in the end. Another thing that'll save you time is learning the keyboard shortcuts. The easiest way to do this is just click on this little cog down here and go down to keyboard mapping. And here you can search the command or the shortcut and figure out how to do those common things that you do all the time just with keyboard shortcuts. One of the things I like to do a lot is split clip. So if I type split, we can see split clip in the timeline is control backslash. So that's something I'm gonna wanna remember when I'm editing. You're supposed to be able to double click and set your own shortcuts, but that seems to be broken, at least in the version I'm using. So I'm sure that will work soon, but for now you can start to learn these shortcuts or map some kind of macro button to this shortcut so that you can edit faster. If you wanna learn more keyboard shortcuts, check out the video up here. Those are some of my favorite shortcuts in Resolve. Speaking of shortcuts, I wanna mention two shortcuts that I didn't mention in that video, and that's Ripple Start and Ripple End to Playhead. These things are freaking amazing. Check this out. This is Control Shift, Left and Right Bracket, and watch what happens. Let's play through this clip here. I'm just eating a cracker. You're just eating a cracker? What are we gonna do later? So let's say I wanna cut this to my question, what are we gonna do later? So right here, what I could do is hit Control Backslash, and split the clip, grab this part and hit backspace, grab the empty space and hit backspace again to get rid of that. I'll hit undo a couple times, but I can do all of that at once if I just hit control shift left bracket and that just cuts the front off of that clip and moves everything down. Oh, some quad dads. That's right. right. So maybe I wanna cut off that's right. Grab right there, control shift right bracket and it will trim the end. So my next pass, I can go through and trim the parts of this edit without having to do all those extra steps of cutting, selecting, deleting, selecting, deleting. So there we go, there's my second pass. And one thing I wanna mention, because this was something I was really confused about, and one of the reasons why I didn't mention that Control Shift Bracket shortcut in the last video, is because sometimes this little button gets turned off. Look what happens if I do it with this clip it jacks everything up and it breaks everything. And then you have to call the police because you don't freaking know what happened to your life. This little button is called the auto select button. 
And what this does is enable your tracks to be changed by your trim tools. So things like split clip and ripple trim won't affect tracks that don't have this enabled. And that's really handy if you have a bunch of tracks and like, for instance, if you had music under your edit and you didn't want to affect the music, you could just turn it off on that track and ripple trim and split to your heart's content. But make sure that's on. If it's acting crazy, make sure those little buttons are on because the auto select buttons control what you can change. Another thing, if you're trying to do an edit really quickly, sometimes, sometimes you'll want to do some basic color correction. The easiest way to do that fast, in my opinion, is to use a LUT. So I'm going to switch over to color real quick. And what I can do is hit Alt S to add a new color node, right click and say 3D LUT. And I'm going to pick a LUT called Apex Pro Tune to 709. And that turns the GoPro colors from that flat Pro Tune look to good contrast, good saturation, maybe not perfect for each shot, but at least a lot more watchable than it was. This LUT is from our Apex pack, and it's a collection of filmic looks designed for footage shot in Pro Tune on GoPro. Check that out, that's at groundcontrolcolor.com. We also have a free GoPro LUT if you go to groundcontrolcolor.com and click on free LUTs. At the bottom here, click on free GoPro Pro Tune to Rec 709 LUT, and that should look really nice as well. So I can just shift select all of these shots and then middle button mouse click on the shot that I've added the LUT to. And here I have some decent looking colors. Again, they could use some adjustment, but I can switch back to my edit and have a decently watchable little video. So there you go. There's a few tips on how to edit a little bit faster inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more post-production videos on editing, color grading, things of that nature, subscribe here to my channel on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.